Good day, happy hump day, and welcome to Real Estate with Welcome to Real Estate with Kendall. And uh we're hump day, um, hump day, weekday real estate. And we have who do we have here today? Call, tell them who, who we have. Yeah, no problem. Uh Demario McClary, a loan officer with Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. Great, great, great. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, let's see, uh, born and raised DMV, um, Alexandria City. Um, was able to uh, play a little college basketball. Um, graduated from Coppin State University in Baltimore City. Um, was able to, uh, you know, do the whole college thing, graduate school, got that. And then probably about three, three and a half years ago, got introduced into this whole lending uh, aspect of real estate and mortgage. And uh, that's what I've been doing uh, probably by the last three years now. Got you. How, how you like how you like that that career change? You know what? Um, one of my frat brothers actually sort of introduced me to it. Um, didn't really know. I know I didn't really want to be a real estate agent, um, but I was, you know, good with being patient and, you know, customer service and sales and uh, numbers and paying attention to details. So um, I like it, you know, um, of course, you know, being a business owner, okay. you, know, you have your, your roller coasters, but you know, when you hit, you hit. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. The, the, the roller coaster rise. One of the, the biggest things is for us was trying to keep that roller coaster up high, right? Keep that plane, keep that plane flying. Um, yes, great, 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 great. So where are you at now? Where where are you practicing with your, your lending license? Right, right, right. So right now, uh, where am I? I'm in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, the whole DMV um, with Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. My, my, my branch is in Severna Park, Maryland, but I operate, you know, you know, from home. I'm in the basement. I'm going to office when need be, you know, once or twice a week if that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So uh, on the show, we talk a little everything real estate. Uh, of course, this is my second one. So uh, any any of the bloopers out there, y'all can bloop and laugh or whatever. But <laughs> you know, keep it moving. But first key term that I uh, that uh, home buyers should know: that's appraisals. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, myself. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Tell, tell us a little bit about appraisal. Yeah. So appraisal, you know, is basically uh, the inspection that lets us as lenders and yourself as home buyers and as sellers you know, the value of the home. What is it? You know, not what is estimated to be on Zillow and Redfin, you know, not what the homeboys down the street say it is, is what the value is. So those are the numbers that, you know, we we go by um, as a lender. Uh, we only lend up to the appraised value. Okay. So if this is, I'm throwing something out there, if it's um, valued at a 300,000, mm -hmm. okay, but you have a contract for 325, Okay, as a lender, we're only going to go up to that three hundred thousand, that twenty five thousand extra to make the three twenty five you're responsible for. So when you're working with a real estate agent, you know, and myself, you can you can piggyback on this. You always want to get those comps right. So when yep. you make that offer, everybody knows what those numbers are looking like. Yep, and that's true. But let's talk about today with what's going on out there. What about those? Uh, I said uh, appraisals that are coming in, but then mm -hmm. folks are um, it's lower than the uh, twenty five thousand over and all of that stuff that people are, are, are getting. How 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 are you seeing that process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen both sides of that coin. You know, I've seen people. You know, let's just keep those that three hundred and three twenty five. So that's when we started with the contract. Is at uh uh what uh three twenty five? No, three hundred. Mm -hmm. No, three twenty five. Yeah. And uh, it appraises at 300. Yeah. <laughs> and does that buyer have the the the, the cash to close to make mm -hmm. up for that 25? Or, you know, like, you know, Marcellus, you can always go back and negotiate, you know, that that bridge to try to bring it down to either come up with the whole 25 from this from the buyer or yeah. have way with the seller or, you know, it's always and I tell people this all the time. You know, until you close, you know, contracts can change. <laughs> yep. You know yep. what I mean? So it's always yep. a negotiation until you close. I think that's a good thing that people need to know because I think that a lot of people only believe in the the, the, the lender 
part of actually financing the loan. They don't know that if they go over, they can negotiate. And if they have the cash, they can put their own cash up to make the difference. I think that's that's big for folks to know. Exactly, Marcellus. Actually, last week I had one um, in, uh, I want to say, Lanham or Bowie. Um, the contract crack was, was 325. It appraised at 316. Um, the seller didn't want to budge at all. And the buyer had to come up with that, you know, yep. 19,000 difference. And we was able to do it in the close. So it all worked out. That was a, that was one that was able to close. Nice. You know, it's not always like that. <laughs> not always like that. That's for sure. That's for sure. So uh, another key term, closing costs. Tell us yeah. a little bit of uh, your take on the closing costs. Yeah, so closing costs has nothing to do with uh, down payment. Okay, it's sort of like the, the, the back end of the actual loan. And usually, let's just say um, FHA, usually that's three and a half percent down. So that's like a down payment side. And usually the closing cost is in between three to five percent of that. So I tell people all the time, you know, always try to make sure you have like between six to eight percent. You know what I mean? Is whatever that loan amount is, because that's going to take care of your down payment and your closing costs. Uh, closing costs is always negotiable as well. Uh, first time home buyers in the state of Maryland transfer taxes okay that can always be split okay mm -hmm. or you can negotiate it it's, it's negotiations right you can always negotiate it to where the seller takes care of that for the first time home buyer um so closing costs from the lending aspect is always going to be after the down payment what is the cash to close and that's what we want to make sure you have before you actually get the final approval gotcha 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 so Let's, 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 let me mess with you real quick. Mm -hmm. Closing costs with the down payment assistance, does that number normally still be the same as the numbers that you spoke on? Yeah, um, yeah, those are, those, are, those are usually, that's just standard, you know, that three and a half down if you're doing FHA. And then yeah. usually, you know, it's always, you know, some different programs have different point systems when yeah. it comes to like, uh, like Chinoa is always going to be, uh, one, a point and a quarter, a point and a half, you know what I mean? Gotcha. On top of that closing cost. So different programs have different things in it. You always want to go with a lender that's going to be able to sort of explain it to you so that you get an idea of why your closing cost is what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the next uh, key time is credit score. That's that's a real big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just generally, right? So uh, we'll talk about uh, basic level and then we'll talk about um down payment assistance level and then we'll talk about conventional levels so generally speaking um credit scores need to be for fha at least a 580 or better mm -hmm. okay um that's not down payment assistance that's just hey i got some money in the bank my credit's not good but i got a 580 or better can i get a house as long as it's your primary residence and you're at least, at least at a 580 or better you have a chance okay um down payment assistance a lot of the programs that um, I use, they start at 600. Okay, so you need at least a 600 or better. If you really want to maximize down payment assistance and really get the bang for your buck, where we can actually push the debt to income as far as it can go in that program, 650 or better. Gotcha. Okay, um, conventional, you know, uh, my guidelines say 640, but when I do the underwriting, 700. You know, you're not going to get a conventional approve one less let's just say 685 or better that's what i've been seeing you know with my experience so 685 or better you have a really good chance of getting a conventional loan uh which has a lot of perks into it but one of the main things is the down payment is only three percent it's not three and a half percent gotcha 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 so you just mentioned down payment what are the ranges of down payments oh uh from what i've seen from three to five percent gotcha gotcha what about the um what about those conventional products that have that that higher one, like 20%? How, how do you feel about a buyer that can put 20% down? And you could put 20% down on the house. You know, you have a lot of options. You know, that's not really um, the everyday buyer, mm -hmm. you know, from what I've seen. Usually when I see people putting down 20%, from my experience, those are investors. You know, those are the people that say, hey, look, this is not my primary residence. I know and I at least have to put 20% down. They mm -hmm. got the money saved up. It's really the investor's game. They're putting down 20% or higher. Usually first time home buyers, 
Um, they try to stay between that three to five percent <laughs> from my experience and what I've seen. Gotcha. Gotcha. Another big term is mortgage rates. Tell us yeah. about the mortgage rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has been um, very interesting. Still historically low. All right. Back in the 80s, you know, you're talking like 11 percent or higher. Yep. You know what I mean? Up to like almost 20 percent uh, yep. right now. You can still get depending on your credit now, you know, rates, you know, credit has a lot to do with it. But if you're looking at like a 680 or better with credit, you could probably still get, and then we're talking about primary residence right now. Mm -hmm. You could probably still get a 5%, you know, not saying how much you're going to pay on points, right. you know, but it's out there. Uh, but what I'm seeing with uh, rates, you're looking, depending on the program, you're looking at like 5 to 12%, depending on the program. And I'm talking about we got so many programs. See, I'm talking about self-employed programs. I'm talking about programs. So gotcha. five to twelve percent. Gotcha. Can can the rate be bought down? Of course, of course. Your rates can always be bought down. Um, anything over two points, I have to get an approval from corporate. Gotcha. You know, because you know the lending laws. Mm -hmm. But you can always, if you got the cash, you can buy the rate down. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Here's one one real big one that everybody throws around because it's uh it's it's, it's termed different all over the place. Pre-approval letters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just know from what I do with my pre-approval letters. So um pre-approval is step one. You know, mm -hmm. Marcel, you can always you can chime in on it. You know, a lot of relatives that I know, they don't really want to take a client out until they have a pre-approval letter unless they family. Yep. You know, and even then they tell them, hey, you need to get a pre-approval. <laughs> you know, so pre-approval is step one. Um, what the pre-approval letter is, and I'm just talking from, you know, my company and what I do. Or debt to income, employment history, what you're pre-approved for. Okay, uh, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say I collect all the docs that I need to give you a pre-approval mm -hmm. and the documentation that I need is usually, um, let's just talk about um, a W-2 employee right now. Let's keep it real basic, mm -hmm. all right? Um, last two years, W-2s, last two years, tax returns, okay? 30-day um, pay stubs, okay, and 60-day bank statements. As long as I have that, I can shoot you out of pre-approval within 48 hours, if not sooner. And what that pre-approval is, it gives you buying power. Okay, that's the key word, buying power. Um, it gives you and Marcellus a chance to go out there, uh, look at the market, run comps, and see if it's a house out there that you actually want to put an offer on with the pre-approval letter that shows the seller, hey, this person's been um, serious. This person's serious. <laughs> right. You know, this person's serious, and let's take their offer serious to hopefully win the contract. Okay, so another one, but it, I don't think it pertains to you much, but I'm going to ask you, does it, I'm going to ask you, does it pertain to inspection contingency? Yeah, that's optional. You know what I mean? It's always optional. Um, the, the one thing you have to do is you have to get an appraisal. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mandatory. Okay, inspection is always optional. Um, I always tell people it's good to get an inspection because you just see what's really going on with the house outside of the appraisal. It's more of an in-depth, um, you know, what's what this work, this work, this does not work. Um, it's a, it costs more money. I'm sorry, it's less than an appraisal, but it's like an additional two or $300 to get an inspection. Yep. Affordability, what, what, what is, uh, if we use the term affordability, where does that come in when, it, when a buyer comes to you? Uh, affordability is, uh, what I like to ask, you know, buyers is, you know, what's your maximum monthly mortgage payment? You know, if you're if you're pre-approved for six hundred thousand dollars, but really and truthfully, you only want to spend two thousand dollars a month, that's your affordability. You know, you shouldn't be out there looking at six hundred thousand dollar homes knowing that you really internally can really afford, you know, a two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollar home. So affordability to me is after I take you through the process. After we talk about what your maximum pre-approval letter could be, you know, what is it that you really can afford? I still give you that six hundred thousand dollar pre-approval because you can always go out and shop and be like, listen, I'll just work some overtime, you know, I mean, get the job done. But um, real the affordability to me is what can you really afford? What's not going to make you house poor? Yep, yep. 
Yep. So uh, the, the last and final uh, big key term is equity. So I know with you being on the lender side, but tell me what your feelings of, of, of on equity. I mean, if you can buy a house and be in an equitable situation in this market, mm -hmm. you know, um, you won. And I was able to do one last week. You know, uh, last week uh, it was out in Loudoun County in Leesburg. Okay. Not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, mm, we closed the house at 1.4, 1.7 million. I'm sorry, 1 million 70. Mm -hmm. Okay. But after we got the appraisal, the house came in at 1.3. Mm. You know what I mean? So that person didn't care what his monthly payment was. Of course, he could afford it. Um, but he was, after he put down his down payment, which was 10%. He was only financing 963000 but the house is worth one point three. So he bought a house in an equitable situation in the market. Um, if you can do that, the only time I really see that is rare case, occasions like that or mm -hmm. if you're buying something off market. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, you're real big on first-time homebuyers. Get, tell, tell me about that. Well, uh, it's just and like... And the programs and all that you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, first-time homebuyers is always cool. You know what I mean? Because it's a client that's never been through the process before. They're really listening to you. You know, sometimes you talk to people and they're like, oh, yeah, I did this 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. Isn't that called a balloon? Uh, what is it called now? You know, so um, I like working with first time home buyers because um, they listen. They're usually on top of getting documentation to me as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little nervous, of course, sometimes, not all the time. They're a little nervous depending on the situation. But they're really trying to make it happen for them. They're really excited. Um, and some of the first time home, pro home home buying programs that we use here that we've been using a lot of in the last year or two is, of course, MMP, you know, the Maryland Mortgage Program. That's a really good program because it doesn't have a lot of points on the back end. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, compared to like a Chanoa program. Gotcha. Um, but they also have different tiers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they have um, the 3% down, the 4% down, the 5% down, the conventional. You know what I mean? It's a lot that you can pull from from that program. But what's also good about it is that, you know, it's a third. Well, it's like a 45 day close for that program. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not really usually under 45 days. Sometimes if the person's on point and the Maryland Mortgage Program Loan Officer is on point, you can get it done in like 35 to 40. But um, usually those are under, I'm sorry, 45 days max. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the Chenoa program is also a really good program because you can push that DTI to FHA approval. You know what I mean? What that means is like uh, Maryland Mortgage Program, you have to stop at 50 DTI. Right. Um, Chenoa, you can go all the way to 56. You know what I mean? So depending on... It's really a case by case scenario, what the person is trying to do, what the person is trying to get approved for, for, and if they need a 30 day close or a 45 day close. And that's what we, that's what we put them in. Gotcha. Now for the folks out there that don't know what DTI stands for, can you, can you explain that to them? Yeah, debt to income, pretty much yeah. run your credit, see what all your monthly bills are. Okay. And we also, uh, your income. Okay. We pay stuff. Like I said, I asked for the W2s. We average out your income, average out your your debt, sort of have a formula <laughs> to mix the two together, and it's called your debt to income, and that's the guidelines that lenders have to go by. You can't go past what the DTI requires in the, in, within the guidelines. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, how, how are you feeling right now in this market with the calling out recession, the, the uh, interest rate and inflation is in place? What, what are you seeing out there? You know, I'm seeing a lot, you know what I mean? And really, um, how do I feel about this market? I think the market is still strong. Um, I, I do believe that, you know, the realtors really, really got to push. Oh, you know what done. I mean? You got to push. <laughs> you got to push. And really and truthfully, within this market, I still see a lot of realtors that's winning, that's winning deals, that have those relationships. You know, um, I always tell um, people that I get pre approvals to, if they don't have a, a real estate agent, you might want to go with one that's winning deals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially in this market. So um, I'm seeing, I'm still seeing people win. I'm still, I am seeing people that's had pre-approvals for more than 60 days. They're still mm -hmm. out there looking that might get discouraged, you know, but 
You know, it doesn't always happen the first time, second time, maybe not even the tenth time. But if you keep shooting, it's gonna happen. Well, I'll, I'll speak on that a little bit. Um, for me taking these buyers out, I think that the, the buyers just have to have the understanding of exactly what they are getting into trying to purchase in this market, right? And that is is, and I always bring this up to people. I'm like, if 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 you go out there and a pair of Jordans is being sold in champs for, for $200, right? But then you can't get to those Jordans and you go to the resale uh, folks and then they're selling it to you for 600 and you're willing to pay it. That's the mindset you have to have when you're going out here and, and going after a house that you really want that you may have been into that, that open house or you may have visited that house with your, your agent and 20 people were standing in line to go see it. So you got to put your best foot forward. Right. And what's the, I mean, this is an investment. Those tennis shoes can be as well if you keep them on the shelf for a long period of time. But why not if it's an investment that can also, you can pass down to your family, why wouldn't you go after the the, uh, the product the same, the same exact way? Exactly, exactly. And also, if I can um, piggyback off that a little bit, seller credit. You know, um, what you don't want to do, I'm talking about the buyer when they're talking to the real estate agent and uh, the all the offers at um, the asking price. You don't want to put in a contract at asking price and still ask for seller credit. I tell people that all the time, like, listen, this ain't four years ago. We could probably do that. You know, right now, if you need seller credit, go above a little bit. OK, get that seller credit on the back end so that. Your offer still might be the highest, even after they get the seller credit. You know, with FHA, you can get up to 6%, okay, seller credit, okay, and with uh, conventional, it's 3%. So um, if you need it, ask for it. But there's always a strategy involved. Talk to your lender. Well, what I like to do when people need seller credit, I talk to the real estate agent, I talk to the buyer, and me as a lender, we're all on three-way. We're trying to work a strategy to win the contract. So don't, don't just... I tell the realtors all the time, they want to sell a credit. Just don't mark it down. Let's all have a three-way conversation <laughs> and try to strategize it so that we have the best a possible, po best. Got it. Yeah. Now, now, now uh, have, have you, um, now with that, isn't there a way that uh, possible for the lender to also help with some of that, that closing cost? Yeah, lender credit. credit. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's always a possibility too, man. And, you know, I'm not always about my commission as well. You know what I mean? If, if it's somebody that I know that really need this or they've really been working and they have the deal right there, they just need some help. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the closing deals, you know, not saying, hey, man, I ain't giving them none of mine. You know what I mean? So right. I'm always willing, man, because it's so much money out here and so many ways to do it. But um, I'm, I'm always open to that as a possibility as well. Just to answer your question. Yes, there are a possibility that the lender can give them the credit. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, you know, uh, I appreciate you coming on. This, this, you, you, you're, you're, gonna make, you're making history here because it's my second one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, anytime. I'm, anytime. I'm, gonna push, I'm gonna push this thing and uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have you back on again. Tell the people where they can contact you and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if you have any additional questions, you just want to, you know, ask me some detailed questions about the process, about the market, et cetera, you can email me at uh, D McClary, D M C C L E A R Y at P R M G dot net. Okay. And then you can also call me or shoot me a text at 202 215 9968. It's a Monday through Sunday job. You know, if I can't, talk to you right then or we don't have the time right there i'll just schedule for another day another time but i'm always willing and open to have a conversation with you hey again i appreciate you for hanging out with me and us uh this is marcellus kendall kendall one realty resource a bennett realty solution company and this is hump day real estate with kendall have a blessed one hump day <laughs> yes sir have a good one